the whole road has turned into white ice. <laughs> You've got ice in the van! Look at it! <laughs> that one is just constantly spurting. There is a herd of bison. This is a massive herd, like massive. We're Marion and Chris. In 2018, we quit the nine to five and bought Trudy, our camper van. We are currently on an adventure to drive the circumference of the world. We managed to chat to one of the park rangers, a very informative, told us which roads are definitely closed, which roads you should probably have a four by four, and which roads we should be good to do in Trudy. I was tempted to say that Trudy is four by four, but then I thought, <laughs> no, I've got to behave myself. <laughs> We're here in uh, West Yellowstone. We're going to drive this afternoon and go down this route here and then drive all the way down to Old Faithful. We're not going to actually go any further around. She explained that a lot of snow had fallen here. Yeah, this, this road by the lake, um, she said, was really bad and you needed a 4x4. Four four. And uh, some of these roads through the park are actually close. It is uh, four o'clock. Let's, uh, let's get into the park before it gets dark. Have you ever seen a geezer before? No, never seen a geezer. Met a couple in London once in a while, but never seen one. There's a lot of snow. How much is it normally? $35. Hello. How are you doing? Actually, may we have a big fold up map? Have you got a foldy out yeah. map? Oh, yeah. Thank That's you. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. As a proper map. That's what I mean. I just saw it on the side. And thought, oh, well, that's... Morning bison sign flashing. She did say that we might see bison. She said bear and wolves are very unlikely. The road into the park. We're uh, hugging the river on the side. There's uh, little ice patches on the road, but all good. And uh, a little bit of snow on the side there, but no problem so far. We've just entered. Wyoming. Yay! There is a sign saying we've entered Wyoming. We weren't really sure what we were going to see. We had everything crossed, but we've actually, there are elk and bison. Chris is out there. It is freezing cold. I cannot tell you how cold it is. We've got the heating going, but there, just over there are the elk. <clears throat> And just over there on the other side of the river are the bison. I also clarified with the ranger about the bison buffalo argument and she said they are called buffalo um, and they are a subspecies of that family uh, but they are North American bison. There's loads of them. Oh, I'm loving this drive now with this river. The national parks are indeed very beautiful and it's nice coming out of season because you haven't got the mad rush of people that you would normally have in the summer. You can see uh, people fishing in the river, fly fishing. So you can uh, obviously get permits to come and uh, fish in the park. Okay, we're just coming down the road. There is a herd of bison walking down the road. They're actually walking down the road. Wow. That is amazing. Look at that. Bison walking literally right past the van. They're huge. That is amazing. You can't get any closer than that. I think we were lucky to see them wandering down the road and they were all like snorting as they went past. <laughs> amazing. That's made my day, that has. Unstable ground, boiling water, stay on the trail. It's crazy to think that the ground's that warm. I just can't believe that there's volcanic geothermal pools and snow, like within a meter of each other. I would guess that this time of year actually looks better because there's probably yeah. more steam because it's cold. Yeah. Oh, eggs. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, that stinks. That was bad because I laughed. <laughs> and then I had to breathe back in. <laughs> the ground may only be a thin crust above boiling hot springs or scalding mud. Some pools are acidic enough to burn through your boots. More than 20 people have been scalded to death and hundreds more badly burned and scarred by stepping off the boardwalk. So we've come up to the first pool. Bacteria pool, look at the color of that water. That looks like the ultimate jacuzzi. You can see it bubbling away. It's crystal clear with uh, a hint of blue. This is one for our granddaughter. It's pink, <laughs> very pink. The vat of bubbling mud contains the perfect mix of ingredients to create mud pots. Heat, gases, water, volcanic rock, minerals, acid, and even living microorganisms. I cannot believe how frantically that's bubbling away. Look at it! <laughs> that one is just constantly spurting. They've all got their own little individual characters. Some are nicely coloured, some are bubbling like mad, some are blubbering, and some are squirting like this one here. <laughs> okay, next one, Old Faithful, about six miles uh, south of here. The whole park is literally covered in these smoking geezers. The ground is really on fire underneath. It's geothermotastic. Geothermotastic. So he just spotted a park ranger and said, do we need bear spray? And he went, yes, you should take it. No, so we I've... weren't expecting him to say yes. <laughs> we didn't expect him to say yes, but he's got a very cool hat. And uh, it reminds me of Yogi Bear, but I think, wasn't Yogi Bear based in Yellowstone Park? I think it was Jellystone Park. Oh, Jellystone, but I think it's probably based on her. And here's our first contestant, Yogi Bear. But why does he have a skate tied on the top of his head? Because I'm smarter than the average bear. Yeah. It's called the Old Faithful Geezer because historically it kind of spurts every hour. But the, uh, the ranger we were talking to in the visitor center said, because the area's got so much earthquake activity, it does disrupt the rhythm of the squirt. The squirt. So, <laughs> I don't think it's so, squirt. The eruption. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the apparently key. it's not as regular as it used to be because of all the earthquakes that oh. they've had in the area. Oh, Faithful isn't Faithful anymore. Not Faithful. This is it, there's still people patiently coming to, to watch and see what happens. I don't think we missed it. We haven't missed it because they would all be going. We're sat here with cameras. Chris has got his big camera. I've got my phone camera. And obviously I'm talking on the other GoPro. How do you know when it's about to blow? That's I what I know. Me. Do you I've know? just got my camera on all the time. It's going to run out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and again, there's like a little plume of smoke. <clears throat> really nice now. It's gold now. Because once that sun goes down, you won't really see a lot. Come on. Oh, there she blows. It's going! Yay, it's happening! Woo, look at that! <laughs> the sun is just starting to go down behind the hills. And uh, so we're gonna head back to the town now and uh, find somewhere to park up and uh, do a bit of dinner because there's no camping in the park. You can't park in the park. So we're back to uh, West Yellowstone. It is now Yogi Bear. fully dark and uh, one mile and there's a lay-by that we should be able to, uh, to park up in for the night. <laughs> Dinner is served. Steak, so tomato nice. sauce, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. I have been craving <laughs> Brussels sprouts. Chris is like, why, why do you want so many Brussels sprouts? I don't know, just good and hearty. It's a very good, healthy meal. 
and a great way to end the day. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow where we explore more of Yellowstone. Well, it was a bit of a cold one in the van. Look, there is ice formed on the roof. And looking out of the side window, you just know it's cold out there this morning. So we turn the, uh, the engine on to heat the van up. It's a bit icy out there. No, it's not out there. It's Oh on the my, ice. we've got ice in the van. I think that is the first time in my life I've ever seen anybody scrape in the inside. <laughs> oh my goodness. It is bitterly, bitterly cold. It was actually dark when we arrived here, but this is a little uh, truck stop just outside of West Yellowstone. The sun is just uh, starting to come up through the trees. You can see it just in the distance there. There's little Trudy. There's a one other van in front. He's also got the engine rolling. Uh, there was a couple of trucks that left early this morning and there's still a, a couple on the other side there. If you didn't join us on the last episode, we literally rushed from Washington State to West Yellowstone over 600 miles in two days because the weather forecast isn't great. So we're here in Yellowstone. We're going to be enjoying the park this morning before the weather turns. I can't get over that. that why is the ice on the inside, not the outside? Right, let me in. It's freezing. I'm coming in. I, was I, was just I don't want to open the side door because it's going to let all the heat Look, out. Film Bob because it's Bob is being uh, really festive. Bob's Bob is winter wonderland. Okay, let's show you the plan on the map. Okay, so we are here in West Yellowstone. We're going to be heading along the road here to Norris, then cutting across to Canyon Village, where apparently there's some very cool waterfalls. Then we'll be backtracking because the, the road above is actually closed due to weather. Then we're going to be following all the way up to the north of the park, across the top, exiting out of the park through the northeast entrance. Okay, first stop, we're heading back into town to get fuel because we have 199 miles to go today. There won't be any gas stations, diesel stations, fuel stations on the way, I don't think. So we're gonna start the day with a full tank. Half eight in the morning here in West Yellowstone, and looking very wintry, very cold. <laughs> Oof. The handle is freezing. Oh my goodness, I can only just hold it. Here, hold the camera. I need to get some gloves. You can turn it off now. The Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center. I am not gonna not see wolves and bears whilst that Yellowstone. There you go. So when we came in, we asked the, uh, the lady on the counter, why are the animals here? And apparently it's because some of us humans got a bit stupid, <laughs> fed them, and uh, then they sort of became humanized and yeah. uh, had trouble living out in the wild yeah, and get no too fear. close to humans yeah, and everything no else. So uh, yeah, rather than uh, euthanizing them, they've uh, rehomed them here to uh, educate people to stop it happening again in the future, which is great. Apparently there's 1,300 bear sightings in Yellowstone Park every year. And it just re-emphasizes not to feed bears. They are wild animals. They shouldn't be domesticated. They shouldn't associate humans and food because that's how accidents happen. So it's interesting, uh, this time of year, you'd expect bears to be hibernating, but apparently they hibernate in accordance to their food source. And because the bears here have a constant food source, uh, from the park that they uh, they don't actually hibernate. Yeah, not just in the Discovery Center, here in the park. 
So um, even animals are out in the wild. Some don't hibernate for very long or at all. So we're walking past the pen thinking, where's the wolf? It's right there. Oh, there's another one. They just blend. Oh my goodness, there's a third one. This is how werewolves creep up on people because you can't see them. They're so well camouflaged. Okay, we're back in Trudy trying to warm up because it's very chilly. About a mile away is the entrance to the actual national park, which is where we're going back in now. Had to stop and take a picture of Trudy with the Yellowstone sign. We might need a we survived Yellowstone in the snow. <sighs> I think we might. Small queue to get in, but this is a nothing compared to what you'd see in the summer and what we've experienced before. And we don't have to book. We have our America is Beautiful pass already. So this is an annual pass. I think it was $80. It lasts for the year, it gets you into all the national parks. And if you go into more than one park, it's definitely worth looking into getting one of those. I was the, uh, the same guy in the booth as, uh, as when we came in last night and we just went, we're back. So he just waved us through. Back in the park, let's go see what we can discover today. There's quite a lot of ice. <laughs> we just saw a patch coming up. I said to Maria, don't react by going, oh, ice, and putting your brakes on. <laughs> and I cannot genuinely believe how lucky we are to have blue skies. They forecast snow today. I could just imagine a uh, grizzly stood by the side of this river. Keeping a lookout. We might get lucky, you never know. As we learned this morning, they are here. Whenever you see cars, they've spotted something. I don't know whether you can see, but there's uh, early morning fishermen going down there. One stood out in the middle of the river in his waders. Can you imagine how cold that water is? That would be freezing. I'm cold in a heated van. The ground is literally on fire as you drive through the park and uh, having this really cold, cold weather really emphasizes it. What a warm welcome. We just uh, pulled over because we saw that there's uh, some fools here to go and have a look at. And oh, it's uh, not fools. Tr Trudy got a little bit of attention and <laughs> lots, of, lots of loving and uh, a very warm welcome there. And some tips for when we get to Baja. Two Brits here. Brits? Came yeah. up to me and said, it's a UK number plate. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go, welcome to Canyon Fools. Got a view of this wonderful waterfall here coming down through the valley here in Yellowstone. And great views looking over the distance down the river. It's driving along, they keep looking like fires, don't they? All this steam coming out of the ground and it smells very eggy. That was not me. <laughs> Look at this place. You don't realise how volcanic it is. I no. think if we came in the summer, we wouldn't notice that at all. No. So we've parked up and uh, we're wandering down now to the Norris Basin, the Norris Giza Basin. It's very Christmassy walking through the trees today. It does, I, I do feel. Now we know that's a squirrel. <laughs> that's a naughty squirrel. No, it isn't. The Norris Giza Basin, 
the hottest, most acidic and most dynamic geyser basin in Yellowstone. Oh, it's a bit icy. Let's not break anything this morning. Put your arms out. Oh my goodness, literally just off the path here, it's bubbling away. The ground is alive. You can hear it. And just in case you're wondering, it does smell a bit of eggs. Top tip when visiting a geyser, you can fart and no one will know. Marianne! <laughs> Although they might see the steam, love. They might see the steam. Not here. <laughs> Not here. Just take in this view for a second. Beautiful mountains in the distance, forests, all the steam coming up from this basin here this morning. That is pretty epic. Each and every different pool looks different in color, in shape, in intensity, in the amount of steam on volcanic smelly stuff coming out. What a place. All this snow with the, uh, the water bubbling down there, it's bright blue. The, uh, the pathway is pretty treacherous around here. It goes literally all the way around. I think it's about a one and a half, two mile loop around. We're not going to have time to go and walk the whole loop today because we've got a, a long way to go through the park. And, and with your track record <laughs> and ankles, it's not happening. I don't think it's good to go and slip over on the ice. But uh, we're very pleased we came down to show you guys just how beautiful this part of the park is. driving on these roads and making me a bit nervous now the, the whole road has turned into white ice well if there's any doubt that it's a bit snowy around I think this road now shows how high up we are. Yeah, I don't think we should push our luck. Um, I think we should start heading to where we need to be. The snow is making me a little bit nervous. There you go, we just saw a sign for the upper and lower falls. So hopefully as long as the road stays clear. So we've come down to the lower falls lookout and we've parked up. It's a bit slippy and snowy, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> Wow, that's a long way down, isn't it? So we're walking out onto this little pinnacle over the drop, and I think we're going to get a view of the falls. I can actually hear waterfalls. Direct hit! I nearly died! I Be got careful. you! Be careful! Hold oh. my hand! It's lethal! Hold my hand! Hold my hand! Are you saving me after I just mullered you with a snowball? Ooh. What? I was not expecting to see a waterfall we should have a so party. epic! Can you imagine how many icicles are at the bottom of that? It's like bluey green water at the bottom. That must be the trail that's closed at the bottom. Oh yeah, you wouldn't want to walk down that trail in this ice. Which is fine by me. I just said to Chris, there's Chris taking a photo, but I just said, do not slip on this ice. <clears throat> Because literally, let me just hold on to something. That is what happens if you go over the edge. 
What a fantastic view. And little Trudy is parked over just over there behind that rock. Well, I'm definitely pleased we stopped there. Everyone said you have to drive to Canyon Village and uh, it was a little bit out of our way because we've got to go back the same way. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not a snowball, Marianne. That's like a, you just mullered me. Oh my God, crazy woman. She has to get the up uh, the one up. She's gone. Oh, it's looking pretty nice. Quesadilla, cheese, capers, and salsa, and salad. Bon appetit! Starving! It's quesadilla time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we are now going to drive up to the north of the park, and uh, we'll see what we find on the way. Hopefully the road conditions stay okay. Um, we've just got to play it by ear. Okay, we are back to the uh, the main north-south road, uh, which is where we were after the uh, Norris Giza, and we're now heading north towards Mammoth. The United States has got so many national parks, but we were saying so far for us, this one, Yellowstone, has been uh, the most epic, I think. Uh, we love trees, we love nature, and with the, the winter flavor that we're getting today, and the, uh, the animals, the bison, it's just really made it a special day so far. I'm loving the scenery here. Landscapes opened up now. There's not so many tightly packed forests, and we've got more grasslands again surrounded by the beautiful mountains. It's a nice drive, isn't it? One of my favorites in North America. There's a bison. Uh, there's a couple. Yeah, they're still dotted around grazing. Oh, Just come uh, down the road. Wow, look at this view. The, the road's suddenly gone down this narrow gorge here. With no edge. With no edge. Yay. Luckily, the road isn't icy. Wow, look at that. That really is on the edge of the road. Stunning, stunning view. This is pretty epic, isn't it? It's just when you thought the view can't get any better, you come over the top of that mountain. Wow. Oh my goodness. The view's getting better and better. And uh, the road we're taking is gonna go off through the mountains that way, I think. We've still uh, still got a long way, a long way to go today. We're coming down into uh, the town of Mammoth, which is up in the northwest corner of the park. That is definitely a taste of Cappadocia here in Mammoth. Yellowstone Park. <laughs> so any of you watching from Turkey, we're going to give you a little bit of a taste of home here in Yellowstone today because I reckon this looks like Pamukkale. What do you reckon? I think so. go going through the town of Mammoth. It's not so mammoth to be fair. The service station. There, look at the petrol station. A little yes, general yes. store shop. A restaurant. That was a very cute little town. Very and then tidy. We're up here in, in Mammoth 
we're driving across now to Tower Roosevelt and then uh, all the way over here to Cook City. Yeah, so uh, this road along the, along the north, if you're gonna see wolves, apparently the ranger said that this is the place to see them. Although after visiting them this morning and seeing how disguised they are, you're not gonna see a wolf unless it wants to show itself to you. So if we can have one stood by the side of the road with a nice backdrop, posing, Wait that would be so we can see it. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> oh, it's a donkey. No, it's not. What was that? I have no idea. There. What's that? What is that? It's an elk. Is that an elk? Comment below. What is that? So now the drive's going through the valley here. Isn't it amazing how the landscape's changed? Yeah. That's a high bridge. Whoa. What's amazing me is uh, suddenly the snow in this uh, valley here seems to have stopped after coming through the park with so much snow on the road by the side of the road, it's just suddenly gone. Guess what? We've spotted some more bison. You can never get bored. You can never have enough bison pictures. Chris is out there taking some photos. <clears throat> and look who's come out to play. The bison. This is a massive herd, like massive herd. Obviously, we're not going to get close to them. We're keeping well away and close to Trudy so we can always jump back in. Oh. Just hiding behind that car. Look at them. It's funny, some of them are, look at them. They're running around. Can you hear the noise? They're grunting. Oh, there's one coming here. He's not impressed oh, with us. Okay. okay, time to get in the van. <laughs> I'm in the van. I'm not messing around with, with bison. He's right there next there's to the... mummy bison with a baby bison. Yeah, I'm not... Uh... I'm not messing around. That was epic. I really, really enjoyed a place we uh, we stopped. You know, it's easy when you travel, especially if you're driving somewhere where you see a lot of the same thing, whether you're scuba diving or driving around, don't take it for granted. Or you're in a rush because of a weather window. Or you're in a rush. Stop and appreciate it just for that moment and uh, you'll capture some wonderful memories forevermore. Another big herd of bison down there. We were saying, there's not that many places in the world where you can see big mammals naturally living in the wild. There's no fences, they're just free to roam around. But uh, here in uh, the United States, they've got enough space for them to do that. Now we're heading down Icebox Canyon and then we're back into the forest. There you go, northeast exit of the park. We're officially leaving. Bye Yellowstone, it's been amazing.